The Pumpkin King by Michael Lobsinger The Day of Ghouls, Ghosts, Goblins, Witches, Warlocks, and Creatures of the Night has fallen upon us again. This night, one person's insane imagination can lead you straight into the realm of the dead. The day is Halloween, the day of the hollow. This is where my story begins, so sit still, listen and imagine the story as it once was. It's a crisp cold afternoon with cloudy skies, patches of snow on the ground, and leaves rustling about. Work is out, a long familiar walk lies ahead, and the voyage home starts my tread. As I continue down the roadside, time slips into a coma, and my mind wanders off to another place. The walk I make seems to take longer each new fall day, yet today it is even longer at any pace. I arrive at St. Francis Fork and ponder, which path do I take today? One path follows the familiar road, but it is a long and boring journey. I rationalize to myself, it is getting dark, and I am in a hurry. So, without too much thought, I choose path two. This is a much shorter path and yet more unfamiliar. As I take the turn just past the abandoned church, St. Francis, the sun begins its descent. The sun is setting awfully early today. Little do I know what is in store for me this night. You would think I would have been more careful about my choice. Although unfamiliar and not many travel this old road anymore, I chose the path as it's well known by the elders that attended the church many years ago, but since has been given a new name. Because of my hastiness I have forgotten that it is Halloween, and I am walking along Dead Man's Grove. Dead Man's Grove acquired its name many years ago, and has held its name faithfully to this day. Most often when someone disappears or is murdered, they are found at the old St. Francis gravesite along the grove. According to my grandfather, back in 1898, Pap Smithson, the church's caretaker, named the grove. Apparently, he found four young businessmen, murdered in the most hideous of ways. It was well known that these young men wanted to buy the church grounds and to ensure they succeeded, they had begun to play evening pranks on the caretaker. The night they were murdered, the local sheriff found pumpkin innards and seeds scattered about. It looked as though the men were planning on planting the wild vines throughout the church cemetery. As expected, Old Pap was considered both the best witness and a possible suspect. The locals pressured him so badly to give up more information that they believed he was keeping to himself. The day after Halloween, it happened. Pap was found hanging from a barbed wire noose from the old elm tree in the middle of the graveyard, amongst a wild pumpkin patch. The path had been gated until about 20 years ago, when the townspeople demanded access to visit their relatives' burial sites. To this very day, Dead Man's Grove is where the police first look for missing persons. Just two years ago, it held true to its name with the disappearance of Lisa Bonder. She was often seen walking down this very path I have chosen today. Her body was never found, but her silver necklace, having a unique, very recognizable flower charm with inset garnet crystals, was recovered. To this day people say they've seen her ghost walking this path. Continuing down the old path, darkness slowly conquers the light. The wind picks up ever so slightly, never hinting to me its intention. The clouds begin to shroud what little moonlight there is above. With the dimming light, the path is becoming difficult to see, and little did I know I was being led astray from my intended direction. Pondering. What passage have I chosen? I've walked it before, it appears so different today. The last time I walked it was with my grandpa when he told me these same stories of where I walk today. Darkness now surrounds me, bleakness seems to tingle through my spine, and fright is in my limbs. Jumping to my left something brushes my side. What was that? Something shuffled across the path. Slowing my pace. I wonder, was that a dog or a cat? 
It's too late. Darkness overtakes its motion, and at that moment, I swear, I hear a faint cackling, like an eerie laugh. The leafless fall trees surround me. It must be the bare branches rubbing amongst the wind. I notice the shadows are beginning to lurk about, yet there is little light to create such ghostly shapes. Crack! A flash of lightning and a loud burst of thunder shake the ground. The shudder stops me in my tracks. Silence then takes over, and slowly, a howling wind picks up. For a moment, I swear, I can hear a voice in the wind. Off in the distance, what's that? It appears to be a dimly glowing lamp far up the path. For a moment, I was relieved. It may be the end of the road or a friend on foot. Stepping my way towards the light, dead leaves crackle with every step. As I approach the light, it seems to fade, not as bright as it was from afar, as if it was just to lure me. The urge to continue forth overruns me even though my confidence wanes, and my whereabouts is lost to me. Coming upon the light it seems to illuminate faintly around. I see a frightening sight. I stand amongst a pumpkin patch, overgrowing some granite stones, just below an old elm. Scattered here and there are stalks of corn, and a tattered scarecrow. My heart pounds, and my eyes squint into the dark, I quickly try to find the path away from this dreadful place. The dim light makes it so hard to see. The dim light? It's the pumpkins glimmering in their own freakish red, orange, and yellow eyes. Each one appears to have its own face, personality, all laughing and screaming at me at this very sight. Suddenly, I hear behind me a loud scowl of horror. I turn towards the scarecrow. It's gone. My soul falters, trying to resist this draw to doom. I feel my heart pounding in my hands and feet numbing every sensation. The sweat from my face pours down. Branches begin to break, and the howling wind scatters leaves about. Crack! Lightning strikes the old elm, sending a limb directly towards me. Hitting my left side, I am thrown to the ground. The branches scrape my side and I can feel blood trickle. As I begin to recover, mist and fog rise from the site that I lay, and the moon pierces the clouds as warm air seems to surround me. I crawl to my feet, and I lay my eyes upon a stone among the pumpkin patch. The stone is a gravestone. I mutter, how? I'm back at St. Francis Graveyard. I scramble to my feet and begin to run fast and hard. The earth seems to shake, shadows and howls follow me, wherever I go, as if evil is trying to drive me insane. I fall again. Rolling forward, I come to rest upon an old copper door, green with age. Covered in vines. I find myself in the stairs of an old granite tomb. There is just enough light to read the epitaph. A death sentence. As the insidious moon ascends, essence broaches to a drudge. The redolence of blood pervades the air. Your lungs congest with darkness. Breath wanes and obscurity draws. You feel your life permeate into a subtle tick. You plead, what could it be? But of course, your own death. The Pumpkin King. My body quakes with fear. Could it mean me? I struggle to get to my feet, but I fail. My body is covered in mud and moss. Rain begins to pour down like nails, spattering all around. The ground has become soft and cold. Death seems to hold me down. The air smells of blood, darkness overtakes my eyes, and my breathing goes shallow. 
my eyes close. Instantly, I am pulled from my sure to be grave. I look around dizzily. Who did that? Who saved me? <laughs> you will only die this day by my own hand. I begin to scan around again, but it is all a blur. The branches of the trees, gravestones, and pumpkins appear to move in on me, horrifically laughing, scowling, and cheering my end. My heart retreats into a subtle tick. The last I hear is an evil laugh, a face, and the words, I am the Pumpkin King. My heart stops. Life is at an end. The howls continue forever now. I died that Halloween evening, brought to live among the dead. Mind where you might tread, for on any evil day, especially the night of the hallow, I'll be there and so will he, the Pumpkin King. Maybe, who knows, you will be the next to join us. <laughs>